impression that the Star Stable team really does care about the game, and that they want to give us a lot of good stuff. But when the tools and the higher-ups won't cooperate, then what is there to do? Overall, the general consensus I've seen is that they've said that all of the workers, all of their co-workers are super, super nice, but their experience with the management team was terrible. Without a massive swing in direction that is utterly open and transparent, and Star Stable actually becomes what it claims to be, a company who cares about both the employees and the players instead of money, Star Stable is going to fail. decided to schedule based on what we thought players would want. You know what's really funny about it is we've been crying out to Star Stable to stop releasing new horses and they're telling us that they're releasing new horses because that's what we asked for when we actually told them to stop releasing some new horses. If management doesn't really care about their own employees, do they even care about their community? Creation of video games all come from people that have collectively made an idea that blossomed into a digital format for the world. However, the success can soon get to their head with the drop of a hat. Hello y'all, I'm Moon, and welcome back to my docu-series discussing Star Stable Online. Today's episode will be talking about the company portion, and if you haven't seen the previous episode, go watch it here to understand the game portion of Star Stable. I also just want to come on real quick. Y'all are crazy. Y'all somehow got me to over a hundred subscribers. First of all, thank y'all so much because I'm honestly kind of shocked to be honest with you. But I'm glad that y'all really like this. So hopefully this will keep going. I would also like to say that if you're wondering how many episodes this is gonna go, this is going to four. So if you think we're done after the community episode, which is the next episode after the company, you're wrong. <laughs> we got one more episode. And it's mainly just gonna be me giving a review of 2021 of SSO and as well as discussing some other stuff like the aftermath, etc. that sort of thing. Okay, back to past me. <laughs> Previously, we've discussed how SSO so is a game with lots of potential but many issues. However, what contributed to most of its downfall is the company itself. So let's dive into the company of SSO. Founded in 2011, Star Stable Entertainment is the company behind SSO. The current CEO behind the company is Johan Schildberg, I hope I pronounced that right, and the GEO is Stacy Place, who was actually doing YouTube videos for SSO through Let's Plays, and after a while, she became the current GEO. According to their LinkedIn, they have a total of 51 to 200 employees. They confidently state, and I quote, We are a dedicated, excellent team of over 170 employees hailing from 25 different countries around the globe and remain steadfast in our mission to inspire girls and young women to celebrate the power of sisterhood and to create a more inclusive gaming environment. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? We are on an adventure to scale our unique impact in the world with several games in development across desktop and mobile, working with both internal and external development teams. And we're hiring! Why do they need to hire more people now? Well, here's why. Bye. 
On April 4th, 2021, Star Stable Updates posted a video discussing the reviews on Glassdoor surrounding SSO called The Real Issues with Star Stable Online. For those of you who don't know, Glassdoor is a site where people can leave reviews on jobs they've worked at before in an anonymous manner. In the video, she discussed how most of the reviews were negative, meaning that they gave SSO low star ratings most of the time. We'll be discussing employees in a little bit, but first, a lot of the reviews mentioned that SSO has been struggling with tech debt, which the definition in this article when it comes to software development, technical debt is the idea that certain necessarily work gets delayed during the development of a software project in order to hit a deliverable deadline. AKA, if we look at compared to SSO, they've been hit, trying to hit that weekly Wednesday deadline. So basically, tech debt is the coding you must do tomorrow because you took a shortcut in order to deliver the, the software in time. According to the reviews, unfortunately, SSO has been struggling with tech debt for 10 plus years. And this explains why the weekly updates tend to become lackluster due to the constant push, which leads to bugs, half-baked horses, five-minute quests, etc. By looking at the main quest article interviewing Stacy Place, it states how tech death is seen as a big source of frustration and how it can be seen as a low priority, especially when looking at their focus on horse production for money. Furthermore, we learn that they've been using third-party engines with their own engine that they've had for years. It really shows based on how the game performs on all computers with bugs still not fixed that have been constantly addressed. And you'd think with a profit of 44 million a year, they would upgrade to engines such as Unreal Engine 4 or 5, or at least have technical improvements since 2011 or 2012. But nope, the game is in this broken cartoon state. Star Stable had 10 reviews over a series of several years, and all the reviews said the same thing in different terms. Their rating was 2.9. By the end of the month, it had 13 reviews and a rating of 2.6. The game engine is still the same engine from 2009 and needs to be rebuilt. Higher management knows and doesn't care about the bugs or making the game better. They care about making money, aka pumping out horses to milk the player base rails. Now we're going to talk about the mistreatment of employees stated throughout the reviews. Even though employees have stated they love the work environment, culture, and co-workers, they've commonly expressed issues with minimal salary, growth, feeling like HR or management doesn't really care, worse tools in the business from the tech debt that made devs quit since the issues weren't resolved, senior employees weren't being kept, little to no discipline and development, artistically a career dead end, employee preferences, ignoring constructive feedback, mental health ignored, no personal growth for career opportunities, old plans were scrapped due to new people in leadership positions, slogging work hours, new people don't have any singers to guide them in decisive leadership, and inexperienced game devs. The reviews has also specifically stated that management has little to no interest in making SSO, the main product, a more engaging game and only focuses on horses which promote more revenue, which will be discussed soon. I also like to add that with the main quest article, Stacy Place has also confirmed that the reviews were true, but they also still gave themselves a little wiggle room because, you know, they're still trying to defend themselves. So to anybody that still thinks that this is an unreliable source, we now got confirmation that this is true. Acknowledgement of a problem is the first step in fixing it. It is good that we're not seeing another attempt at those reviews aren't true. I do appreciate this, seeing as myself and many others have been attacked and accused of using a bogus site to bring to light the issues of Star Stable. We now have some validation that yes, the complaints in Glassdoor are true, or at least some of them. They always gotta leave some wiggle room, don't they? Since tech debts failed to be addressed to actual experienced developers, SSO ended up losing them due to choosing to only steering it for business and marketing and only focusing on the wrong things for SSO as an MMO, and the roadmap is not under control and important things not taken seriously from a management team that's clueless. This also has me wondering how Matilda Opal Pie, a very loved employee that's shown from segments such as the Star Stable News Show and anything in social media, left a couple of months back all of a sudden. I wonder if the employees that are shown in social media nowadays are either showing genuine feelings or just putting on a font to the community to seem like everything is fine and that it's a dream to work there, but the reality of it being is that it's a nightmare to work at. The developers are doing a great job and I can tell that they really do care about their game. It kills me to think that they don't get appreciated by the higher-ups and that they have no power when it comes to the direction of the game.
The company's priorities is something that advocates for both customers and their shareholders. However, when it comes to SSO, the shareholders are more important than customers, which eventually kill a company. Shareholders are people that buy a part of the company and own that part, and as money is gained over time, the stocks rise in value for companies to stay in business. SSO's that's recently happened is Nordisk Film, which takes up 57% of the value of the company. If companies start losing money, shareholders would start asking questions and prompt a change in the business module, but it's gotta go on for a while and dip low enough. The problem with focusing on shareholders is that companies will then lose their focus on why they've started this project in the first place. SSO's focus went from wanting to give customers a magical horse adventure experience to exploiting our players by shoving horses in their face to make money, which makes shareholders happy. This company needs to start caring about its consumers again and put the shareholders in their place. They are focusing on making shareholders happy and forgetting that those shareholders bought into their game because their customers initially bought into to the game they were making, and as they drift further and further away from what made people play, the game's profit will begin to dip further and further, and they will start to lose money. We are so drawn in by horses that SSO will never change its business practices, and we will never get to a point where the game is going to grow into its full potential. What is interesting is they started selling in 2018, around the time we've got a new owner for Star Stable Entertainment. Coincidence? I think maybe. But still, probably the point where their business module changed and they decided that money was more important than customer satisfaction. A big mistake as proven by Tesco and a lot of other companies who have died because of this practice. The only way SSO is going to grow is to consider their consumers again because they're drifting further and further away from why people love their game and over time lose money. If you think SSO cares about their content, think again. In the main quest article, Stacy Place revealed their ass doesn't even have a quest team. <laughs> And then Nelia tried to use damage control by downplaying what she said, when very much, it makes sense as to why there's barely anything story-wise in the game coming right now besides those few short-ass quests that last like 5 to 20 minutes. Basically, money is their main priority over content. So there weren't two teams? Or at least there hasn't recently been two teams? I hope you are good enough to explain that to your defenders then, because they've been using that as an excuse for why we only get horses. The quests are not taking a long time because it's difficult to make, as you've been saying for how long. It takes a long time because there is no team working on it, yes? To whom were you sending the requests then? You said earlier in the article that all emails are forwarded to the respective teams. Well, you didn't have a quest team, so where did my emails go asking you for more quests? You really put your foot in this one, SSO. It really shows, alright? It really shows, not only because of the lack of quests, but also because the lore being shattered to pieces. There is no way to puzzle together the lore and make it make sense, because they're all over the place. They know that people don't like change, and yet they make so many unnecessary changes. The implications of this is that the content for your game is secondary. Content for a game is secondary. I don't know how any game can make content for the game secondary. I don't know what world they come from, but nobody makes content a secondary thing to do in an MMO. Are you high? <laughs> this also disproves how people would say SSO has two separate teams, one for horses and one for quests. Well, um, we actually got proof now that that wasn't true, and this is what have people been saying a lot. Basically, they have every damn one of them working on horses and barely anything that's content. And the only time they do work on quote-unquote content is this little sliver here and there to say, hey, we did something else. Woohoo! Lord have mercy.
Next, we'll be discussing SSO's hell of a customer service. As I stated last episode, when it comes to their bugs, whether it's the game, getting hacked, or anything money-wise, they'll put the blame on you with assuming you gave out your password, or give you things you've already tried prior, or assume it's a bad internet, and more leading to even potentially getting banned. <laughs> Now think about what you've done. We're now gonna look at these horror stories from Rattle's two-part video discussing SSO's bugs and customer service. And we're also gonna be bringing up Rattle again throughout the docu-series because I believe if you wanna heavily learn more about issues with SSO as a company, she's really concise with her info and her research and gets straight to the point. Let's start with Wisteria. Wisteria sent an email to tell SSO about a hack program that affects the game. She asked if they could patch it and she even offered to show them the program to see how it can be patched. Since it was enabling players to reach level 24, get a Conamera, an NPC horse named Z, and do animations that's not even possible to do in the game yet. She even clearly stated she wants to help to stop the issue. But um, well here's SSL's response. <laughs> Thank you for contacting Star Stable. This game account is permanently suspended due to severe violations against the terms and conditions involving the use of a third-party exploit program. She then tried to contact them again about she was reporting a problem and then here's another damn response. We thank you for being willing to help but we have a dedicated team who are working on this and we appreciate your willingness to help. We are lucky to have players like you. Have a nice day ahead. After a third attempt, they ghosted her and not resolve anything. Next is Xavier's story. My issues with Star Stable Online's customer support started on the 9th of October, where I emailed their customer support letting them know that one, my game wouldn't load, and two, when it would load, I could not see anyone, anyone's messages, any, oh, some NPCs, some NPCs did not show up. I couldn't access my home stable, and I couldn't change my horse for a long time. This actually didn't end until about a week and a bit after the birthday event ended. Over the time of my issues, I got so many copy and paste replies. You will see the copy and paste replies and how they completely stopped replying after the 21st of September. I was having the same issue on both accounts, both my main and my alternate, so there was no real difference, you know? Pretty much they did not respond to me and whenever they did it would either be dismissive, it would be a copy and paste of reply or they would be telling me to factory reset my computer after I had done it twice to prove to them that it was not my computer that it was the game and all this I lost a lot of important things on my computer. Xavier's story is an example of a reoccurring common bug that's still not fixed that ended up fixing itself for some people. A lot of the bugs in the game are reoccurring just like the recent dismount dance glitch. Alexia tried to report this issue however SSO just assumed she was doing a bug that could break the game instead of trying to fix it because this damn bug has been in this game since October. <laughs> Corvus's story involved the Halloween horses, where she was trying to get a Galloper Thompson's Wintfield mare, but after she bought it, it gave her a Tom Hook, which is essentially a magic quarter horse. Here's how the emails went. Within the terms of service, you agreed to open your account. It clearly says that you're responsible for looking after the safety of your account. This means they cannot replace lost star coins, items, or even horses bought by accident. We thank you for understanding. The problem with this statement is this is only valid as long as your game isn't broken. When your game becomes unstable, then it becomes your problem, Star Stable. So she writes again and she says that she would be fine if the tomb hoof was just replaced by the fire wind fell. She wouldn't even want the refund of the price discrepancy because she just wants the wind fell. She's terrified of trying to buy again and getting a second tomb hoof. Star Stable's response is the exact same thing. They cannot, are unable to swap horses for players, be careful in future. And feel free to contact us if you have any other query about the game. Really? Now Corvus kept pushing, telling them that she was very unhappy with the situation and that she just wanted to get the windfall. Eventually Star Stable did say that they are very sorry that she feels that they are not listening. Well gee, we wonder why Star Stable, how about you start listening? 
But they say that as an exception, they will refund her the 950 star coins and that she just had to sell the tomb hoof immediately. Corvus sold the tomb hoof and she got her windfall. Happy ending. It took multiple emails till they finally fixed getting her her windfell Halloween horse. However, they basically can fix it, but chose not to. And I'm not surprised if it was just out of laziness or wanting people to spend more money on the game. Next, a similar story as Ziza's. So here's my story of how I literally lost maybe over a thousand star coins. I, well, tried to get a Palomino Pentavian. Then I ended up getting this in my stable. I tried, I went back to the Palomino, and it happened again. It's this same horse next to it. I did it at least two more times. Didn't work. This exact same horse. And I went to customer support, and well, they were basically saying, thank you for contacting. We're sorry, but unfortunately, our policy does not allow refunds. It's kind of your fault. Our players are responsible. It's kind of not my fault. There's some bug or something that was giving me the wrong horse four times. That is clearly not my fault. And I was hoping for my store clients. And after the second re response, I asked, do I get it do I get it back? Can I at least well I said the whole story again. And you I asked for help. I showed out evidence and look at that. I get ghosted. Another blaming ghost situation. Man. You're like my ex-friends from high school that do this. The issue with all of these stories is that SSO doesn't really read their emails, and if they do actually fix something, it ends up as a hot fix. An example of this is the championship's not working and only got fixed in a hot fix. But now there's lag. The only bugs they actually patch quickly is the Yorvik shootings glitches. Because God forbid they lose money over in-game currency. Accounts can also be affected ranging from having to delete an account stop payments, changing emails, losing pets and horses, previous bugs where you could actually log into each other's account and even get into the game files in five minutes. Thought this was a game? 911. Officer, right there. FBI, Come on in, fella! With being able to get into the files that easily, this is how people find spoilers and do race shades because it's that easy to get into. The funny thing is, SSL thinks their game can't be hacked. However, that's not the case. Any game can be hacked. I and mean, if you think games don't get hacked, look at Valorant, look at Fortnite, look at Minecraft, look at a lot of MMOs. <laughs> This can also explain the after effects of their ongoing tech debt. At this point, you're lucky if you managed to get your issue fixed, but many more that SSO shifted the blame onto as issues from SSO's end continue to increase. As much fun as we make of them, we can't deny that this company just does not care as much as they should. The proof is in the pudding. They just don't have good customer service. They should never use cookie cutter responses, because every person who contacts them about a problem in their game is unique and they need to start remembering that again. There are of course instances where a cookie cutter response is warranted, but that should never be the total norm. And you are supposed to care enough about your players to take their issues and concerns more seriously than just a cookie cutter response. But really, the main thing Star Stable is read your damn emails. talk about how the community and feedback is treated by SSO. When it comes to focusing on horses and money, SSO is mainly focusing on the newer players, so here's how that cycle works. You just started the game, go all the way till you get hit with the paywall, and then you see the huge good deals on Star Rider memberships, so you end up buying a subscription. You've now become a new Star Rider. After a while, you buy a shit ton of Star Coins and then finally got the lifetime membership. Over time, with buying horses and finishing everything in the game, you end up getting bored. Then you end up becoming an older player after a while. Then, surely soon enough, a new player ends up filling that spot SSO wants to get money out of. They 
won't care about your ideas or your wants because at the end of the day, they just want to make money from new paying members. This game is not a continuing adventure as advertised. Their advertising is basically fraudulent. This game is a horse collection game with a single player story and far too many cross country races slapped onto it, aimed at children, whom they have convinced the money they spend on premium currency is going to fund the game to make it better. Children who think if they just hold on to their hopes and dreams, higher management will listen to them and their favorite game won't die. How does that apply to feedback? Feedback and constructive criticism often get ignored, unless if they either do a copy-paste response of WE HEAR, hear YOUR concerns, CONCERNS or a different response based on the context or use COVID as an excuse when in Sweden, where SS's headquarter is, is haven't really been affected by the pandemic. Can you instead focus on the game and not pushing out horses with no end in sight? Where would you know that a horse is only come so frequent to generate money? that isn't put into game development. Disappointed. This game could do so much, yet it fails. And the comment is literally so true. This was Star Stable's response, which I feel like is complete crap. Like, I don't want to be mean, but this is complete. Like, I feel like they're straight up making excuses. We understand all of your frustration. With COVID and all of our team members having to work from home, we've had obstacles to overcome this year, but feel good about the projects we're working on and can't wait to share them with you all eventually. If you need to step away and take a break from the game, we completely understand and support you. We'll be here if you ever decide to come back and explore your week with us. This is the biggest, like, I can't. The COVID excuse? That is so fake. This whole situation with the horses being pushed out has been happening for so long before COVID, so this argument is completely invalid. No, I don't think the management behind Star Stable understands at all actually. And this is because Star Stable said we understand all of your frustration, which they clearly don't. They're, they're completely ignoring us. No, I don't think the management behind Star Stable understands at all actually. That deal with it or leave mentality is completely unacceptable and I can't believe you went there. We shouldn't have to step away from the game we love because of your lack of communication and updates. Maybe take a break from these tiny weekly updates and horse making to dedicate more time to your story and quest themes so we can actually get something substantial. I honestly wouldn't even mind monthly or bi-weekly updates if it allows the team more time for better content. It's been years. I'll give a little bit of a break because of COVID, but this is becoming ridiculous. It's really ridiculous indeed. The whole COVID excuse is literally just <laughs> so embarrassing. Sophie responded again. Star Stable, this whole pushing horses down your player's throat has started way before COVID. This is an excuse not even relevant to the issue. Truth is the horses generate money, but instead of investing it into the game, it gets wasted on a series of Star Stable which has zero with the misfall we know from the game to do, to do. Books and what else? No, this pandemic is no excuse to not listen. Tell that to management. They should finally listen. Yep. They should listen, but they're not listening. They don't care. A clear example of feedback ignored is, once again, the damn... <laughs> Gen 3 Frisians. We're not about to get upset again. It ended up the way it did due to ignoring feedback that was clearly posted on the Grayscale post. The only time they would listen is if their money was getting affected. SSO also struggled with being transparent about when shit comes. For example, new updated characters. In their What's Coming Next Year articles since 2019, they stated they are working on the characters. But they said they are looking at it, buddy. When they mention something, the overall message gives off that it's gonna be worked on, then be ready next year. And so basically dragged it on with copy-pasted responses of, we're working on it, or it's really hard. If they aren't done with them, they shouldn't have brought it up in the first place. The most we got now is concept art after almost a fucking year. This isn't the only promise that got broken. There was supposed to be an updated racing system, which still hasn't happened by the way. And some people thought that the working equation races wasn't an updated racing system. No, honey. That's still the same horse system. You just got a, ra a course with random ass objects to go and jump around. An updated racing system would mean updated mechanics and how racing would work, not new types of races under the same old system. SSO also didn't really deliver on more engaging events as Stacy Place said when they took out the events because they were either recycled or watered down just to drag on for weeks to say they are doing something. Feedback and constructive criticism was also treated differently from different parts of the community, which will go more in depth next episode but basically we got people that know people have different opinions and people that think constructive criticism was sounding like a satanic ritual or a terrorist threat older players are getting neglected over time with sso's decision with money and here's why SSO has a disease that a lot of game companies have, the good old money hungry drive. Basically, if it wasn't painfully obvious to do, SSO is very money hungry and almost on the levels of EA. Oh 
away. You can clearly see it based on inflation of prices, both from the game and on star coins and star rider deals. Especially to learn new players in to be another wallet to them. Here's the thing, we're all aware that SSO needs money, but they're not struggling. People generally act like SSO is a small indie company when they're a fucking multi-million dollar company. It's even more obvious with the shit ton of horse updates that come out every damn month and the refusal to raise the daily 100 star coin allowance to save for fucking horses that cost over 700 something over 900 star coins for horses Come on, I can keep these pennies to myself now SSO also used to be more generous with star coins because it was their way of saying thanks to the community. The reason why people now ask where are those codes is because they haven't happened in a long time. For example, they didn't give any for their 10th anniversary birthday and instead give a free horse. Which, here's the thing. The horse is nice for me and others, however, it can also not be nice for others because since this was also based on votes for limited options of horse breeds, coats, etc., this is the result we got. Also, people asking are still grateful, but when you get shitty updates, shitty quests, shitty stat quotes, shitty advent calendars and unanswered questions, you're gonna get people asking why shit's not happening as it should. Hell, we only got two star coin codes this year. One because they hit like a milestone with Instagram followers, and one from Christmas. Something's a little twisted there if you think about it. To go even further, SSO would also invest into shit that's not the game or tech them, such as their ripoff Vivo music channels, wannabe anime show. And books. That's all fine and dandy, but with the state of the game, it's clear what areas are more important to you. Even other money hungry companies at least have fucking content that lasts for months and months. The problem is, SSO is thinking short term instead of long term. Yeah, horses and new players are gonna bring in money, but over time, people are gonna leave due to the lack of shit to do in the game. Tech dip would get worse, and the community will just get disrespected or have others still under the false belief SSO gives a shit. Another example of money hungriness is the use of limited edition horses. Limited edition horses range from ones put into the app, open house horses, and magical breeds. Besides holiday and open house horses, these breeds were often advertised as not really returning or leaving Jorvik, which still implied they wouldn't come back. Well, all that changed until Isla and Umbra, a very popular Jorvik magical horse, returned this year, and oh boy. There was a mixture of people going, yes, I can finally get this horse, and others going, but this wasn't even supposed to come back. Not only that, this birthed the we can't say anything right now response since it's now triggered a wave of people wanting other breeds to come back. One of them being the Bark Hearts. The Bark Hearts are magical Lusitanos that came out in the summer of 2019 and a lot of people love them, including myself. However, they wouldn't return because of SSO saying that they're the ones that said they wouldn't come back. Now, I find it hypocritical because they essentially gave the same message to other breeds as well. It doesn't gotta be a whole thing where it says they wouldn't. The message implied they wouldn't. And that's why there's people that are mad that they would just return again. Now, I'm one of the few that managed to get one, and I got Sakura. Unfortunately, I don't have Birch, and I'm okay with them coming back. However, they're not really gonna be considered limited edition. The magic horses are now more really being considered as seasonal, if anything, since they come back around the same time. For example, the magical Alcoteaks with Smithsummer. Also, I also feel feel like they wouldn't bring back the bar cards due to saying it, but if there's an obvious demand for a product that can make them money, they might as well take it instead of just pushing shit out that would last for the short term. Another issue with magical horses that I've stated is some being on half-baked breed models, overuse of models, some models being forgotten, and some lacking detail or not following the theme of the events. Just like with normal horses, they need to slow it down and put more effort into them so they would not be half-baked and become a fully baked horse. <laughs> Also, in terms of saving horses, limited edition horses are another reason why it's so difficult to save with an allowance of 100 star coins per week because they come in between a time period before the permanent breed comes out. This year alone, I haven't really bought any permanent horse breeds because of limited edition horses take up most of the priorities. Now yes, there's an argument of you don't gotta buy every horse. That's true, however, it still wouldn't work due to the demand and severe FOMO 
leading to bandwagoning from influences of YouTube videos or posts. That's why if they increase the allowance to 200 star coins, it actually helps saving become more efficient to actually get a horse. But wouldn't this destroy the economy and income of SSO? No, and here's why. With making, once again, seeing this a bunch now, 44 million people are still gonna buy star coins due to being impatient and there's also still people buying memberships which i feel like people keep forgetting that aspect of money they're not gonna struggle from it and i see it as a doable option to help balance the inflation of prices on products such as clothes horses etc it also would help keep up the release rate of horses and i feel like people don't understand that the release rate is way too high and it causes people to struggle to save or even financially buy anything there's no happy medium with that. That's why everyone's saying we need 200 allowance because then, if you think about it, if you actually sit here and think about it, right? If we were to get 200 a week, that means we finish out with 800 star coins a month. And then we wait one more week to be able to buy one horse when they shit out two a month. So that means you have to wait for every other horse to come out in order to buy one. If that's how it is right now, you have to wait two months. So that means four horses pass you. And how is it that you can sit here and keep up with that? You can't, you have 400 star coins at the end of one month if you don't spend any of it. And then two horses have come out, but you want that first one. And then you wait the next month, that's 800. That means there's four horses. You still need the 850 to get a horse. That's just the baseline. That's the most average price for a horse in the game is 850 star coins. So you gotta wait five weeks to get one horse when four have been shitted out. You're gonna sit here and tell me that's not rigged. No, because it, no, because that makes sense. That makes sense. You know, star coins aren't just for the horses, they're for the clothes and things. Yeah, everything. Star coins is the buyable currency that buys everything. It's so that they can get money. There's just no breathing room for players to save because the FOMO's taking over the majority of the time. And the fact for those like me who budget and save only put it into horses that are actually worth it. So, to conclude, SSO is a money-hungry company that went from a company that gave a shit about the game until they started to make bank. It's funny how even the CEO is also trying to give advice on how to treat game communities when the relationship between SSO and the community is damaged and on edge. It's only a matter of time until people realize what's behind the mask after 10 years. And it's honestly just sad to see how this game has become. They're looking at what is making the company money. What are you buying? When do you buy star coins? Do you buy it on the double star coin weekends? Do you buy it when there's a pack involved? When you get a pet? Um, when are the peak times to buy star coins? Is it when a horse is released? How many horses are being bought? What horses are most popular? What tack is most popular? Um, things like that. The main thing is star coins. So how do you get the management's attention? You stop buying star coins.